Hello! So today I'm going to be doing a challenge. Now this challenge isn't who is the best nerdy YouTuber. Because everyone knows I'd win that. Now in fact, this challenge is I'm going to be ranting about Shrek the Musical. Change the colour of these lights, get a more like Shrek-y mood going. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, how's this a challenge? Now you see, you might not believe this, but I've got a lot to say about Shrek the Musical. So what I thought I'd do, as the budding Shrek the Musical YouTuber, is give myself a 10 minute timer where I have to talk about Shrek the Musical non-stop. That means I have to talk about Shrek the Musical without really repeating or going over any points and just keep going unscripted, unedited, until the timer goes off. Oh, and also I won't be able to see the timer because obviously that would make this way too easy. Now before we start, let's talk about the forfeit. If I go over any old ground or just stutter a little bit too much or there's too long of a gap between sentences, every time that happens, I will do a shot. A shot of vodka at the end of this video every time so I could genuinely end up getting drunk. Do I have any shot glasses? I'll work that out in a minute. You know, obviously we needed some tension in this scenario. It's actually quite stressful, you know, like I've got, I've got to improvise all this and you know, like I could talk about Shrek the Musical for days but when the, the stress might get to me. So let's get this started in three, two, one. Shrek the Musical is an absolutely fantastic musical. I don't think it's really been given enough of a chance. Like, because I've been reading about it, so pretty much what kind of happened was that the original Broadway run never really made its money back, and therefore it's kind of just been subjected to like the occasional tour, and it's become very much more of like a children's musical that schools put on. But I really don't think that's fair. I think it's, it's a musical that is incredibly funny, but manages to do something with the source material that is really, really heartfelt, and I think elevates the first Shrek film. Now let's talk about the cast, because the cast, I think, is absolutely fantastic. Brian, Darcy, James, and Shrek. I think that is a performance that could so easily get lost under the makeup. You imagine, as an actor, that is such restrictive makeup to have to deal with. Yet he manages to be so expressive, really vibrant in the role, and he makes great choices where he isn't just grumpy all the time, you know? Like, he very much knows how to navigate this character arc, which yet yeah, was present in the first film. But his fantastic performance elevates that character arc and shows the character softening in what I think is an absolutely fantastic way. I think also his singing is fantastic. I will get on to the songs, but overall the way he sings songs is fantastic. I think his accent is brilliant and overall Brian Larty James is fantastic. Now let's talk about what I think is the standout of the cast. And that, I think, is Sutton Foster. Yes, I'm allowed a water break. I love how I have to keep that in because, you know, I'm not supposed to edit this segment. So, Sutton Foster is absolutely fantastic. I mean, if anyone was going to doubt her singing, you're wrong. Her, she sings in Shrek the Musical so fantastically. And she has a personality that, yeah, she sort of brought to other things, but Shrek the Musical has really allowed her, just, there's a personality that she just manages to shine through. It's almost, I think she said in an interview that she find, she found Fiona, like the character that she's found most similar to her, and you can see that in her performance, like the way she delivers jokes, the way she says things, it's just, there's a vibrancy and an energy that I think is absolutely superb the way she delivers her performance. Some would say the tap section in Morning Person um, is never too long. I think it's brilliant. Um, obviously, when you've got a triple threat such as Sutton Foster, you need a dance segment. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's arguable. It could go on a little bit too long. But I have a lot of fun with that section. So I'm glad it's in there. 
Now donkey, let's talk about donkey. Because donkey is one that's probably, you know, it's, it's quite similar to the way donkey is done in the original. And let's not take anything away from Eddie Murphy. Oh, that's a stutter. Oh, I think that was a shot. Um, let's not take away anything from Eddie Murphy. But this donkey performance, which oh, Daniel Breaker, I was about to, I was about to forget um, who was donkey. Right, I've smashed it. But oh, that donkey performance is absolutely fantastic in a way that it captures the energy of the original really, really well. Because Donkey is one of those characters that doesn't need a huge character arc. He gets a little moment here and there. But he doesn't need that big, big character arc. So you, what you really needed was to capture that energy on stage with elements of that movement. But really, it's that personality. It's that humour. It's the ability to kind of lovably piss you off. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. And I'm, it's, it's one of those that out of the big four is probably my least favourite out of the four, just because I don't think Daniel Breaker does enough to elevate the role beyond what was done in the original, like I think the other three do. But I still think he's an absolutely fantastic performance. But now we've got to get onto, oh Lord Farquaad. Um, Chris Sieber, um appears in quite a few of the projects. You know, I've been listening to a lot recently. I mean, the Spam a lot. Um, I've been listening to quite a bit, um, and I think he's fantastic when he appears in that. Uh, the Prom, um, the Acceptance song uh, is brilliant, and obviously Love Thy Neighbor was excelled um, by Andrew Reynolds. But Chris Sieber is appearing in a lot of the things that I'm really, really enjoying listening to at the moment. And he's, this is his standout. This is so, so fantastic, his performance here. I think Farquaad, if, if you actually, because I did actually recently watch the original animated film, and Lord Farquaad doesn't appear as much as you think at all. He's, he's, he's li literally, like, I think his like, screen time is about 10 minutes. And you know, that isn't changed too much here. Like, Lord Farquaad doesn't suddenly have this massive. Look, it isn't Lord Farquaad the musical, but the lack of stage time that he doesn't get compared to other characters is made up for by this fantastic, fantastic Chris Seaver performance. You know, obvi obviously Chris Seaver didn't come up with this, but him being on his knees, it just, oh, it just creates such funny moments in What's Up Thulock. And just just generally throughout the show, I think the additions to that character's backstory is fantastic. And Chris Sieber smashes that role. It's it's fantastic, fantastic stuff. I think there are moving on to the rest of the cast. There are some highlights. I mean, John. I think it are bollocks. His name's like John Tart. John Tortellini. Um, he's 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 good. He's very, he's, he's very good, obviously he does a lot of the stuff, if you didn't know, um, he does um, Magic Mirror, um, oh, I've forgotten, other things he does. I've forgotten. but he's, he's very good, and look, there, you, you never look, at, like there's a weak link, apart from um, Egg, um, sorry, like Humpty Dumpty, um, she can piss me off, and also the Wicked Witch, the Wicked Witch, like, hi, is this the pop like, shut the fuck up, <laughs> I'm, I shouldn't, no, no, you know, better. They, they are, they're allowed to be irritating, but, you know, that happens. Um, I feel like I stuttered a bit there, so oh, that's two fucking shots. Fuck. Um, so, let's talk about some songs, because quite frankly, I think that's where the real magic of this is. Now, um, if you didn't know, um, I criticised Spanooky Films for um, wanting All Star at the start of um, Shrek, but Big Bobby of the World is better. I think it's funny with the parents, but then when you like actually come into like the big Shrek bit, it's sick. It's oh, it, you know there is, it's a really good song. Like All Star doesn't set up the character of Shrek particularly well, but Big Bright Beautiful World fixes that completely, and it's a fantastic setup for the character, and it's just a great song. 
Um, I also think, what is, oh god, oh no, this is a stutter. That's a stutter, this is my third shot. Fuck. The one where the fairy tale creatures think the stress gets to you. Honestly, try this for yourself, the stress gets to you. Um, but, that song is lovely. It's really good. I'm slowly starting to lose this now. I'm gonna move on now. What's up, Doolock? I've, I've got, I've remembered my trainer, but what's up, Doolock? Fantastic. Again, Chrisiba nails it. Overall, that is, is that's another fantastic song. With, that's one with more like dancey movement, but it allows itself to be very, very creative. And I think that that is really, really good stuff. Now, as we move to the end of Act 1, you have who I'd be. I'm allowed another water break. Did you hear that break? So, who I'd be. Now, you might go, James, shut up. Who I'd be is the best Act 1 finale of all time. <sighs> no, it, pro it, it probably isn't, but it, it's, it's the best Shrek the Musical song. Everyone knows. It's the best Shrek the Musical song, and for great reason, it's such a fantastic song. It, it, it's hard, it's so hard not to love that song, because it's absolutely damn fantastic. It's oh, just, just the harmonies, the way all the harmonies come at the end, obviously just what it means for the Shrek character, and oh, the harmonies. I'm going to say it again, harmonies. I love it. Oh, who I'd be is fantastic. I've done it, kids. Oh, that was tough. That was so tough. You know, I feel like I played that a little bit safe. I feel like I could have talked about like more topics for like less time. But you don't know how hard that is. So I've had a look back at the footage and I know I said it was three. Um, I called myself out three times, but on the third one, I was stuttering a lot. Um, so, I've agreed, because there were some maybe moments, um, I've agreed four shots is, is, is fair. Kill me. Now, please don't judge me, but um, as, as a student, um, it's, it's Tesco vodka. Tesco's own cheap shit vodka. Oh, I've got to do four fucking shots of this. <sighs> but there are some people going, oh yeah, binge drinking, yeah, I smash that, I smash that on a daily basis. Like, I don't, I don't, I just, you know, I just down a bit of Ruddle's best at spoons every once in a while. First one. Needs a forfeit just so you can put forfeit in the title. Fuck it out. You're number two. Number three. Number four. If you like this video, you just can subscribe if you want. <sighs> On a serious note, if you want me to try this challenge, with another musical, um, obviously if I'm familiar enough with it, I'll happily do it, leave it in the comments below. If you have any Shrek the Musical video ideas, please give them to me, because I want to be the Shrek the Musical YouTuber, but I have no ideas. I mean, as you can tell, I was scraping the bottom of the barrel in this one. Also, I have links to all my past Shrek Musical videos up in the card in the description. Have a lovely rest of your day.